Hello, so I, I love adding steam and vapor and, and mist and smoke and stuff blowing around in a scene. It's a it's a really good way to add some life to an environment and make everything feel, you know, more more alive and dynamic. But I almost always do this using video textures. And that's because while I'd love to figure out how to do it properly with like a, you know, a full simulation someday, most of the sims I see that where I'm like, oh, that's kind of cool. You read the comment and it's like, yeah, this is only two terabytes of simulation data. It took three days to, to process. And maybe that's, you know, a bit of an exaggeration, but like simulation data can be very big and unwieldy. And so I love just being able to stick a little 2D video card in there and have it have it kind of work. Um, unfortunately, like there's, they have limitations because it is a 2D card trying to represent a 3D cloud of, of steam. And I've been, I've been working to try to get, get through that. Um, I've got the video talking about how to uh, how to assign that so it's you know translucent so it can interact with the lighting of the scene and um, I have another one talking about how to make it fade out so when the camera passes through it it doesn't just clip it'll actually kind of fade as if you're passing through it um, another one about using them for uh, for heat distortion which works way better than I than I think it should and there's also a technique in there where if you get right along the edge of it it'll fade out so you don't see you know the entire video texture kind of like flatten but there was always one thing that drove me crazy and I could never figure out how how to get around it. Okay, so we've got our scene here. Let's bring in our, our steam element. I'm gonna hit F3, import images as planes. Pick a good steam element. I don't care about any of these settings, I don't think. Um, whoa, I'm gonna scale this up and set it up, you know, as, as steam should be. Yes, uh, let's slide open the shader editor and play with some of these settings and see if we can get a slightly better result. Shader editor, I'm gonna delete the principled. And I'm gonna check cyclic because these loop. Uh, the, this is a Steam pack I uploaded like a year ago. Um, I've got a bunch, you know, as an asset, but I also have some free ones. I'll link it below. I'll link. I'll link all this stuff below. Uh, let's create a transparent shader and a translucent shader, and we'll mix them together. And the mix factor will come from uh, the color of the video texture. So the white values will be mapped to translucent, and the black values will be mapped to transparent. Um, and when we connect this to the surface, you can see there, there we go. And what I like about this, as opposed to um, just plugging like the video texture into an emission shader or something like that, is this will actually interact with the light. If you, if you tint the light some other color, it'll actually interact with the light as opposed to an emissive shader, which would ignore that. So that's why I like using translucent. But you will notice something horrible when we move down. And that is that the shadows left by these bars are perfectly crisp, which really reveal that it's just a 2D card. And I tried absolutely everything to see if I could figure out how to, how to soften that up a little bit. I was like, I, I would literally spent like a day or two on it before Nathan swung by and was like, hey, I wonder if the subsurface scattering uh, node would work. And so we tried it and shader, subsurface scattering, and it disappears. And that's because subsurface scattering is trying to simulate how light bounces around inside a solid object, like skin or uh, a translucent rock like quartz or, or something like that. And it doesn't do very good if the, uh, if the object is just literally actually flat. So under modifiers here, let's add solidify. And okay, well, the first thing you'll notice is it's being kind of weird. There's two two versions here, and that's because it's mapped to both the front and the back of this cube. Um, but we can fix that really easily. Here, let's create a new material. We'll just call it transparent, and uh, go to transparent, yes. And if we go back under the solidify modifier, under materials, we can just offset both of these. So they're using the next texture slot, which is just the, just the transparent one. Um, and okay, this is still looking not great. And also it's like red, which is weird. And that's because the defaults for the subsurface scattering node are um, set up to simulate flesh. So it's trying to give our steam that nice fleshy glow, which we don't really want. Um, the good news is to fix everything, we're just gonna change everything to one. So I'm gonna change this to one. I'm gonna change this to one. The radius, this is uh, the red, green, and blue value, which is scattering at different amounts to try to simulate, you know, the way skin does. Well, don't do that, we're just gonna make everything one. And now if we play around with the depth of the solidify modifier, you can see we can crisp up the shadows, we can soften them, we can do a bunch of different stuff. We did some tests where we were dragging the video texture into the scale too, to see if we could make you know the brighter areas seem deeper and, and different things like that. It didn't really seem to be be worth it to to me. But yeah, look at this, this is, this is just exactly what I wanted. Just being able to easily control the, the softness of the shadows. It's not pure volumetrics, but it does simulate it well enough that I'm, that I'm really happy and on the chance that anybody else has ever struggled with this problem. I wanted to throw this out there into the collective consciousness and uh, yeah, anyways, hope this is useful to somebody. Um, I will talk to you soon.